This is the Miller Bugatti. This car matters because it's a quintessential melding of American ingenuity, French engineering, and Harry Miller, who was the seminal race car designer of the modern era in America. This car started life as a 1926 Bugatti Type 35 Grand Prix car that Bunny Phillips purchased and raced. And then, as luck would have it, uh, he had the occasion to acquire the V8 double overhead Cam Miller engine. There were only two or three of these engines made, and they were in the Miller four-wheel drive cars, one of which was being raced in Germany prior to World War II. And Adolf Hitler happened to be in the stands at this particular race, and the motor exploded in a big way. The Conrad and the piston flew out of the engine, went into the stands, and, and according to historical references, barely missed hitting Hitler in the head, which, of course, would have changed the course of history. It's just a complete Miller V8. It's a 302 cubic inch with double overhead cams, four carburetors. It's normally aspirated. And in an act of American hot riding, Bunny grafted this engine into the Type 35 chassis to make what he hoped would be a, a very competitive Indianapolis car. And this engine is much larger than a Type 35 Bugatti engine. So Bunny basically had to make an entirely new body for the car. But it's still a very elegant, graceful shape. It still retains the Bugatti brakes up front, all the Bugatti running gear. This is a honeycomb oil cooler in here, honeycomb radiator. The car is all original as to its pieces and its provenance. Inside the car, we have the basic engine gauges and a tachometer. That's about all that was required. Drum brakes on all four corners, friction shocks in the front, combination of friction and hydraulic shocks in the rear so that the suspension was a little bit tunable. They were very brave guys. Bunny had a fairly serious accident with this car you know, one year in testing. And as you can see, there's no rollover structure, nothing to keep you out of harm's way if something goes wrong. He raced the car in 1941 and 1946 at the Indianapolis 500, not with great success due to some mechanical failures, but it was a great melding. The car drives great, corners great, and does all the things you'd like a race car to do. It makes great sound, too. I definitely feel that I am a steward of the car for a period of time, and I took it for about a 100-mile drive yesterday, and it does all the right things. I'm Charlie Nierberg, and this car matters.